if you couldn't remember I was coming, uh, then obviously you don't care. So, so that becomes a big problem. So, so that kind of leads into, you know, what is John leading into? Okay, so that was John Farquhar, and he's on the Dog on a Trucking podcast this week, and he's going to tell you what he is leading into and the experience of being a safety insurance guy on the Dog on a Trucking podcast. Join us. Welcome to the Dog on It Trucking Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Harris, Safety Dog. And when it comes to trucking safety, the dog is on it. I am so privileged to be able to sit and discuss with a variety of trucking influencers a wide range of trucking topics. Please, if you would show your appreciation for the podcast by leaving a thumbs up, a comment, a rating, it would help me so much raise the profile of this show and bring it and make it available to even more listeners. So thank you very much. I appreciate you and your time that that takes. Now, let's get on with the show. Johnny, welcome to the Dog on a Trucking Podcast. How in the heck are you doing? I'm wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. This is cool. Hey, not a problem. Glad to have you on. What the heck have you been doing? I understand that uh, you're doing your own gig. Well, yeah, kind of maybe. Not sure yet. Uh, yeah, we just kind of uh, changed up what we were doing here uh, the uh, beginning of May and uh, taking some time off, a little rest, do a little de-stress and unwind. And well, I got a lot of stuff around the house needs to be done. So we're going to work on a little bit of that. Make the wife happy. Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> Honey do list. You got her. You got her. So yeah. So uh, yeah. So uh, we've been contemplating for quite a while going out on our own, and uh, um, yeah, we're going to take a little bit of time. I've got a number of people that want to talk with me here in the coming weeks, so we'll uh, we'll see where it transitions to. Well, it's it's an interesting game at the moment for the listeners. If you're listening to this later, we're still in the middle of COVID nineteen. Um, at the time of recording, this is a Tuesday and it's stage one of Ontario opening. Um, mm-hmm. So I haven't seen a customer in what, six or eight weeks? I forget how long it's been. Ten weeks? Yep. Yep. As soon as I got locked I down, say, I mid- quit, quit seeing customers. Yeah, I was going to say middle of March anyway. So yeah, so yeah. Uh, my, my last visit was uh, the 16th of March. Uh, with a customer and uh, it was very interesting because uh, we sat in a very large room and we sat in four corners of the room because we were honoring the social distancing so well my last visit I was quite nervous quite honestly it um, Mm -hmm. it was one that they were begging me to do because they were being non-renewed by some god darn insurance company damn them insurance companies And uh, so I had to go in and see these people. It's a new customer. And I walked in and the guy says, okay, well, come on into my office. Well, we're in a two-foot square closet, the two of us. Well, it wasn't quite that small, but you know what I mean. It was really tight. And he was like, we're both sitting there in our feet are touching type situation. Uh, It made me quite nervous. And instead of my usual uh, several hour long thing i cut it short yep. you know, I yep. just, uh, yeah i was gonna say it makes it a little nervous when the guy's in the room close enough to fog up your glasses <laughs> yeah well look at i want to talk to you about safety because um sure. and i think this is really interesting for our listeners not to uh speak badly about any of the insurance companies but nope. Nope. Uh, when i was with an insurance company i always had to ask permission uh to do an interview like this and most of the time mm-hmm. I got turned down. I couldn't do mm-hmm. them. And I recently asked a safety follow from another insurance company, and I won't name mm-hmm. the name because yep. he said, no, I can't do these shows. Uh, they won't let yep. me, which is, that's all fair. I understand that. Yep. But you're no longer employed by an insurance company. You no, sir. recently left. Yes. So <laughs> I'm hoping that you're going to drop some bombs that the listeners will go, oh, my God. <laughs> Without me, I mean... And when I say bombs, it's not um, speaking bad about anybody, but I'm talking about the secrets to impressing 
the safety guy, the, the, the insurance safety guy. You know what yep. I mean? So anyways, what, what are some of the common errors that Johnny would find or John Farquhar would find? Um, yep. And before, maybe before we get into that, John, sorry, do you want to say who you no are problem. working for or do you want to just leave that out? Well, you know what? I, I'm very proud of who I was working for. I was working for the Guarantee Company of North America. Um, was a, a great opportunity. I, I think a lot of people know me back from my, uh, my days working at Zurich. Uh, and then left there, uh, took a little hiatus, went over to uh, the Guarantee, and where we started something that was phenomenal. Great opportunity that uh, I think anybody would just love to lap up. Uh, and then uh, I think a lot of people are aware that in the late 2019, December, as a matter of fact, uh, the Guarantee was purchased by Intact Insurance. So uh, um, I just recently left that uh, organization. Just it, it just wasn't a fit for me is all. That's, you know what, nobody's fault, no one person. Just was not a work for me and uh, just didn't work. And I'd been thinking about for a long time about maybe uh, moving on ever since we caught wind that uh, we were sold. So it was just, you know what, needed something to do. It, 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 it's interesting because I was with Zurich for seven years. I've been with uh, Guarantee for seven years. So I'm thinking there's a seven-year trend, so maybe it's time to get out on my own again for seven years, see how that goes. Uh, they call that the seven-year itch, but I thought they were talking about marriages. Oh, God, well, there you go. Well, it's kind of like a marriage when you're yeah. with the same company for a long time. <laughs> it, it is. Well, but, actually, but either way, yeah, either way, it, it's been an opportunity that I wish on anybody. I've learned so much. Uh, I've been able to advance my career. Uh, my knowledge, my education, uh, been great working with both companies, Zurich and uh, and uh, the Guarantee. So I can't complain at all. It's it's been fabulous. People I worked with have been phenomenal. So it's uh, just now time for the next chapter in my book. Well, in in some ways, um, many of the people from Zurich went to the Guarantee. So you didn't even yes. change the people that you were working with. Like Angela. Right. It, it was a really good fit. Yep. Good team, good atmosphere. Uh, we just meshed really well. Yeah. So, so and, and I've met Angelique. Obviously, never worked for Angelique, but she seems yeah. like a really good person and, and somebody great who I could work for. Great person. Yeah. Very knowledgeable, knows her stuff, has some great passion and whatnot. So, yeah. Great person. Yeah. So, anyways, tell us about some of the common errors that when you walk in, let me ask you this one. Have you ever had the experience where you walk in and the guy looks at you, the trucking company owner looks at you and goes, oh, shoot, was that today, John? <laughs> yes, had a few of those, as a matter of fact. Um, you know, and, and usually that starts the meeting off well because it's like if you couldn't remember I was coming, uh, then obviously you don't care. So, so that becomes a big problem. So, so that kind of leads into, you know, my thought process when you said what are some of the common errors i see probably the biggest one that i see is culture sorry just, what just the, the the culture is not right you know um i kind of look at it as there's two types of cultures there's that culture where there's profits over safety uh and then there's the opposite culture where it's safety over profits um you know, is it, is it negative, positive? Yeah, you call it what you want, bananas, tomatoes, apples, but it is culture. And, and that right away is going to tell you how your meeting's going to go. We're going to, you know, you start into it, you have that conversation. You're going to get an idea what the culture is like in the first 15 minutes of this operation. Just small talk will tell you what's going on. Right. And so when you're in there, what do you see often that... Um, well, what are signs of culture? Well, what are you looking for when you say culture? So, so first off, right away is, you know, we're, we're talking about, I always like to start off my, my meetings with a small talk, kind of get a feel for them, share with them a little of my experience, find out what theirs is. You know, I, it's an opportunity for them to brag about how they're managing their company. Um, it's a great opportunity to tell me what you're good at. Uh, and then I'm going to tell you whether you really are or not. Uh, but we're also going to look at what are you not doing that you could be doing much, much better. So the small talk is going to kind of get a little comfort zone, get everybody relaxed a little bit so that we can talk candidly as to what's going on and what our real purpose here is. I, I'm not a guy that wants to sit here and look at driver files. Uh, I don't want to look at your maintenance files. I want you to tell me about your programs. I'm going to look at them to see if what you're telling me is true. 
you know, and then that's where we're going to find out if we've got some problems. But if you can't tell me what's going on and how you're managing this company, yeah, then maybe the culture's not where it should be. You know, if if uh, if your carrier profiles are off the chart, yet maybe your compliance records are great. Well, you can be compliant, but not necessarily safe. Uh, yeah. So that starts to tell us about the culture that's going on. More interested in making sure I look good, but I'm actually being good, or am I just lucky? So yeah, the culture has so much to do with it. But you'd mentioned something else that um, I, I wanted to ask you. How important sure. is this interview with the safety person? Um, you know, at Zurich and at uh, the Guarantee, <laughs> what kind of weight did the safety department throw, not throw around, that's the wrong word, but yep. uh, how about the word influence? Uh, what kind yep. of influence does your report have on the underwriting department and therefore on the premiums that the carrier might pay? Yep, so, so to start off with, uh, the underwriter would not quote an account unless we went out to see it. Simple as that. They wanted to see the report. They wanted to hear how the interaction with the interview went, the meeting, valuation, survey, assessment, whatever you want to be. I heard you use the word audit in one of your other uh, videos. So, yes, you know what? It's, it's all of those rolled into one. But the underwriter wanted to know the underlying. You have a submission. It comes in a number of documents from the underwriter, or sorry, from the broker. The underwriter is going through that, but it doesn't give a picture of the culture. So it's really key that this, this evaluation happens, and we call them risk evaluations. And it was very important that we get this information to the underwriter to give them an idea of what the account is actually doing. Right. Yeah, they look okay on paper, but how are they really? Um, many times the underwriter would come with us. So there was a lot of weight that went into the... Um, the pricing, uh, our reports at the guarantee were very much influential with the underwriting side to be able to steer them in the right direction. It didn't give them the number. It helped them to derive to the right number is, is how that works. So that's going to be at any insurance company. That, there's going to be a lot of waiting on that uh, evaluation process and that report. Uh, in when in my old days, way back when, it's been six years now. I've been gone from Old Republic. Oh wow, uh, that long? Yeah, but I used to tell my clients that this interview affects your premium by twenty percent. That yep. you know, if you looked at a hundred grand a, a, as a premium, if I wrote a bad mm -hmm. report, and and if they still wanted to insure the company, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. the premium is now going to be at least one hundred and ten. But if I wrote right. a, an extremely favorable report, I could reduce it down to 90. Well, that's a 20-point yep. swing. And, sure, sure. You know, sure. And so with, with that said, I, I saw your video on the, the hard market, and I agree 100% with what you're doing. But we could actually add to that a little bit more uh, with this current situation. Um, there's a very good chance that if I write a favorable report, you're not going to see a reduction. Not today. But you could see an as-is quote, uh, which means you're not going to see anything. Uh, across the board, most people, most underwriting and insurance companies are at least looking for um, inflation rates, you know, a couple of percent, three percent, five percent. But my report, that uh, the detail and the nature of what I put in my report can definitely swing it in the negative. And I've seen it swing at 30 percent, 35 percent, depending on how bad you really are. So it can hurt. Well, that and I know that all the safety departments have enough sway that if they write the report in such a way, oh. the trucking company's not getting a quote. Uh, it, ex exactly. There's many times that, you know, I come back and we go, you know what? Yeah, it might look good on paper, but when you get down to see the people, um, they're, they're their conversation is more about, I just need insurance. Can you get me signed? Hurry up. How soon can you get my report in so I can get insurance? I just need insurance. And, and it's like, you guys, you're not getting it. So back to that culture again. It's like, you just want to keep running. You, you don't care about what it costs to have this insurance. You just need it. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, what length of time should a carrier, uh, do you think they should allow for this safety interview? We were, we were always trying to 
strive on that three to four hour mark. Um, I try not to interrupt your day. Uh, but with that said, uh, we've had many a meeting go five, six hours. Uh, and when they go five, six hours, that's a good sign. Um, that means that the customer, the carrier is quite engaged in the conversation. Um, there's going to be a lot of great information being shared back and forth. Um, they're probably, if, if we're getting into that kind of timeline, they're making a lot of notes because that's what's key to us is if, if we're giving you a lot of information, you should be taking down a lot of notes because this is going to help you in the end. Um, so, you know what, three to four hours, I think, is the norm. Um, but again, they can go longer. If, if your meeting goes uh, less than two hours, maybe less than an hour, you, you, if you're the carrier, you should be concerned. Oh, that didn't go well. <laughs> well, certainly if it's a pre-quote. If it's a pre-quote and it's that short, mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I as, know. as my mama used to say, if you ain't got nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. <laughs> yeah. So what are some of the things that would you would put in your report that would make a client uninsurable? What have you seen in the Uninsurable? Past? Yeah. Uninsurable. Yeah. No quote. Uninsurable. Okay. Um, probably something to do with the, um, uh, the lack of involvement in the meeting. Um, and I think we've all seen these at one time or, or another um, with regards to, you know, everybody that we know that's in this, uh, in the safety risk management side to go out in front of a customer, you know, the person you're, you're conversing with is sitting there busy, you know, he's looking at his phone. I got messages. Hang on a minute here. You know, it's one thing to say, okay, I want you to take care of business because maybe you're the only guy, but if there's somebody running the operations department and you're supposed to focus on me, but you don't want to, that's going to be a, an indicator right there to go, yeah, there's a strong one. We don't want to insure these guys because they don't want to make the time for us. Um, somebody that disregards um, safety, compliance, risk management, you know, um, driver files are a mess and they don't care. Uh, safety training is awry, they don't care. Um, driver training out in the field, bring trip, who cares? Ah, I got time for that. Who's got time for that? No, no, no. Those are things that are right off the bat are going to get written in that report. They're going to go to the underwriter. We're not hiding anything from the underwriter. We want them to know this is what's going on and this is not looking well. So now on the other hand of that, if I get a guy who goes, oh yeah, you know what? Oh, this is great. Yeah. Have a look at my driver file. Tell me how good they are. And you go, yeah, you're, they're not bad couple of things here's a couple of things you need to do and oh here's some training you could do but oh, making all kinds of notes writing all kinds of things down. we're going to fix that oh i'm going to fix that i've actually been with customers that have taken my recommendations to heart right while they were sitting there um they had three people in the meeting and the safety director points to one of the girls he goes go grab that policy right now grab the original let's look at it let's tweak it right here while john's sitting here with us so boom they fixed the policy right in front of me. We reworded it. And before I left there, they had made 40 copies and stuck them all in the driver's mailboxes. So they had that rectified before I left. That is going to get you big gold stars in a brownie mark. Yeah, and, it, and just for those who are listening, and it can't be superficial crap that you're trying to do just to impress the safety guy. It's got to be something yes. substantial that um, yes. is truly safety oriented. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, one of, one of the key things is, you know, as you learn this job is you learn body language. You get to know who's snowing you, who's telling you a story. You know, we, you and I, we've been around here a long time. Anybody that's been around this long time is, knows what it's like. You know, uh, I've owned my own trucking company. I've been the guy on the other side of the desk trying to get insurance. You know, and you know what you can say and you know what you can't say and you know what you should say. And you know what? I know when somebody's trying to tell me something that I want to hear rather than something I should hear. So you get to know them pretty quick and then you get to pick up on them. And what's really interesting is when you pick that out and you give it a few minutes during the conversation and you come back to that area again and you find out, oh, I just got a different answer. Okay, let's try that again. Give it 10 minutes. I'm going to come back with you with a different question, but then the same thing. And I'm going to get a different answer again. Now I know he's not paying attention to what's going on. Uh, again, that's going to be some bad marks against what you're doing and not sure you're going to be insurable if you can't get with the program. Okay, and this is a question I just thought of just as, as you were speaking. Knowing 
that it is likely that you're going to hang a shingle out as a uh, safety consultant. Um, mm -hmm. You know that I did six years ago. And the yep. reason I did it is I used to sit across the table from some safety consultants who were very good at compliance. Um, mm -hmm. They could make driver files look impeccable. They could make maintenance files yep. look impeccable. Uh, they, these people could pass an audit in most mm -hmm. cases. Yep. If you scratched yep. a little bit deeper, or if you looked at the actual <laughs> safety record, Yep. Um, so leads me to two questions. If you decide to become a consultant, why? And then maybe before you answer that one, how as a safety, uh, an insurance safety person, how do you dig deep enough to know whether this safety consultant is truly having an impact? Uh, because a lot of the companies that I deal with, certainly uh, the 50 trucks and less, and there's hundreds and hundreds of them here in Southern Ontario, Mm -hmm. uh, have safety consultants as a, a very viable uh, management of risk. So when you get in there as a insurance guy, uh, safety guy, how do you dig deep enough to know whether the it's a safety consultant who doesn't know their shit or whether it's the owner mm -hmm. who won't let the safety consultant do what is actually necessary? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the big problems out there is there are not enough good consultants. Um, I think all the, con all, all the consultants that we know in a kind of tight group and whatnot are great guys. Unfortunately, there are a handful more that, as you say, they're compliance people. Um, they're not risk management people. Um, part of the challenge in this, in this role of being a consultant is to try and get the customer, the carrier, to understand they need to do more than be compliant. Um, with my background on insurance, uh, I think that's a big asset because I can go, guys, I know what they're looking for. When, when they're trying to quote you, I know what they're looking for. And it's more than compliance. It's, it's back to that culture. It's like, how are you going above and beyond? Don't sit there and wave your CBO at me and go, oh, I passed my audit. I'm 82%. I'm okay. No, there's so much more that you could be doing. And, and, you're probably not, because even all the good customers that I had uh, in, in my career here, not everybody was perfect, and they admit that. But there are a lot of them that go, I'm good, but I want to be better. And those are the ones that are going, help me. What do I need to do? What am I not doing that I could do to be better at what I'm doing? Um, the unfortunate aspect is those guys that are skimping by aren't asking those questions of their consultant. Uh, or of their insurance specialist. They're more just interested in how do I keep the doors open and how do I make money. The problem is it's been proven time and time again that if I invest in my safety department, my risk management department, provide training to my drivers on a regular basis, I can actually save more money than I would if I cut all those things out. Because they're not taking into account the money they spend on damages, violations, convictions, uh, driver turnover. Like these are all horrendous costs that you don't need to endure. If you invested half that money into your safety culture, you'd cut out a lot of those things and you'd find out, wow, I actually make a better profit. Because you might think the insurance company is going to pick up those claims, but every time you have a claim, they're just going to keep adding to your premium and it's going to keep going up. Well, not just adding to the premium, if the client would understand that the insurance company has to make money and yep. the insurance company, most of them uh, tell us that they have a 30% operating cost or overhead. Yep. Um, yep. So Spot on. Yep. If, if you have a 65% loss ratio, you add 30 points to that to cover the building and salaries for the insurance company, mm -hmm. you're at 95 mm -hmm. All of them mm -hmm. want to make a 5% underwriting profit. Yep. And so yep. if exactly. you're above 65% loss ratio, if they renew you right now, they're going to mm -hmm. add mm -hmm. a lot to it because they want you well below 65% loss ratio. Yep. 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 Exactly. Well, and, and you'd hit the nail on the head there in, in your um, 
last video about the hard market where I've seen it myself where we've had customers with very low loss ratio, but their lack of safety commitment is what got them a non-renewal because the potential was there. You know, we've got policy limits that we see hit on a regular basis. Um, I think the norm prior to the hard market was $5 million um, limitations. Now we're seeing two. Insurance companies don't want to give you $5 million anymore. They're afraid to give you $5 million. You've got to go look for it somewhere else in a reinsurance. So you've got to be really, really, really good to get that $5 million. And there are even some carriers out there that require 10 or 20 million because of what they're hauling, the product and whatnot. And you know what? Uh, I had a number of those clients and they were really good. And you know what? Underwriting had no problem writing 10 million, $20 million policies. Um, but my continual visits had to keep that going. You had to make sure that you guys stayed the course, you did what you're supposed to, to keep those kind of terms and conditions in place. So, and those are the guys that are always going, what can I do more? What, what else? Could, what do you hear out there that I could do better? What can I do here? It's like, wow, you're using telematics at the wazoo. You're training, you're hiring, you're qualifying of your drivers is repetitive to the point where it's fabulous. You don't have any losses. Your, your, uh, your carrier profiles are all in single digits. It's like, you're doing a great job. What can you do more? Keep it up. And, and let's talk about maybe a new tweak or maybe a quality assurance process or something along that line. But it's encouragement to keep them going that course because it takes a lot of resources there's no doubt about it but they will admit it's cheaper doing it safer well it's cheaper and the owner can sleep good at night yes yep. you know, like yep. one of the reasons i i don't want to be a safety guy for a trucking company anymore is i don't want that <laughs> 2 a.m phone call no to say no. we wrecked no. a truck i just I, I'm out of that bit. I'm too old for that stuff. Yeah, I'll say yeah. stuff. Exactly. Keep, exactly. You know, um, and that yeah. was episode 14 was the hard market. Uh, you also talked yep. about telematics and I would encourage the yep. listeners, I, I offhand, I don't know the episode number, but Ward Workington from Fleet Metrica yes. does a great job of uh, um, handling all kinds of stuff. So give that a yep. listen too. It might've been episode yep. 11, I'm guessing, but I'm not sure. But yep. Ward Workington, he's in the list there. So do that. Yep. Um, but yeah, Good we stuff. are in a hard market. My God. And, well, as, as I told well, you, it, it, go ahead. I was going to say tele, telematics is so key right now. It, it's if, if you're not using telematics, then you're, you're not using all the tools in your toolbox. Um, I, it really, really disheartening when you go out to see a customer and you go, oh, yeah, we've got Omnitrax in the trucks. Cool. What do you pull from it? Uh, nothing. We just use it for ELDs. Yeah. Well, really? Like, because you could be doing so much more. You know, people need to think of what are the consequences of not utilizing these services? And, and one of them right off the bat is I could save my bacon in court if I utilize these services, learned from the, the uh, data that comes out of it, and improve my operations by utilizing that data. You know, it could help me put into place some training programs that I didn't think of. Hard brake, overspeed, uh, following too close, uh, hard cornering, all these great tools at your fingertips, but people are going, I just use it for ELDs. You know, and it's like, well, that's not going to cut it. You got to get with the program nowadays because the courts are going to go, well, you had it at your fingertips, but you didn't use it. So therefore, yeah, you're not really bought into the program. So we could have prevented that collision if you'd done something, but you didn't. So guess what? We're going to write a big check. Uh, also, you've got it as a trucking company, they may have it at their disposal. And if they don't use it, the prosecuting attorney sure as hell will. So, oh, definitely. Yes, they will. Because, they love it. They eat that up. No problem. You yep. can't destroy that evidence. Yep. So they're going to yep. use it against you. Um, yep, exactly. You know, and I can't tell you how many customers I'd ask, well, what do you do about hard breaking? Mm -hmm. And this is before ELDs. Well, how do I know about hard breaking? <laughs> there's an ECM, like you download yep. it and you... Yep. You could pull those off on a monthly basis and whatnot, you know, or quarterly at least. But yeah, there's no reason why you couldn't have been using that information. But now with ELDs in place, everybody's, there's always, there's a telematics aspect to ELDs and all the trucks. There's no reason why you can't be using some of that information. Yeah, they, it just, it's mind blowing to me. 
Anyways, yeah. the, the, what other yeah. tips or tricks or things would you like to say to the audience and how to get ready for their uh, insurance audit, uh, their, their safety insurance audit? Well, I guess, I guess the, the, the one thing I look at is not all insurance companies and not all risk teams are created equal. Right. Um, they're, you know, we won't get into the bads and the crooks of it, but everybody's looking for a little different than others. I encourage people that when you start that conversation with your uh, risk specialist, your insurance specialist, your loss profession specialist, whatever from the insurance company, when he calls up and says, hey, yeah, I want to come out and do a, uh, an evaluation, an audit, an assessment, an interview, a survey, whatever it be, you need to start asking him some questions right there. Don't go, oh, okay, yeah, we'll see you at 2 on uh, Tuesday. No, no, you need to go, okay, cool. What would you like me to have prepared for you for that evaluation meeting? Uh, I want to be ready for you. Who would you like me to have at that meeting um, so that we can have everybody at the table? Now, if it's coming from me, 99% uh, of the time, I send you a list. I send you a list. I'm looking for uh, driver management, vehicle management, loss management, uh, safety management programs. Uh, I'm looking for the operations of the company, where you travel, where you go. Um, we're looking at your crash data. We want to look at your carrier profile information. And while we're at it, I want everybody at the table. I want to see the owner of the company at the table. I want the manager at the table, the GM. I want to see the operations guy at the table. I want to see the safety manager at the table. And you know what? When it comes time, I'd like to see the maintenance manager at the table as well. So there's five folks right off the bat that should be at that table, and they should be taking this seriously. Now, there's some of these folks that are not going to need to be at that whole meeting, but they should be available so that we can call them in during the time period that is most pertinent to them. Right. Nothing worse than talking to the general manager who kind of oversees the safety department, but he knows nothing about what the maintenance guy does. And it's like, but you've got this carrier profile of all these defects. What are we doing here? Why don't we talk to the maintenance manager and find out? And you find out he doesn't even know anything about it because nobody shares the profile with him. So these are things that all of a sudden come out of the woodwork during the conversation. So if we have all these folks at the table, we can probably enlighten them. If not, they're going to get their eyes open real quick to go, I didn't know that was available. Why isn't anybody sharing that with me? So now we can get a collaboration of teamwork. And on top of that, we get calibration between the team members. So everybody knows, I need to know this now. How do I get this information from you, Mr. Safety Manager? So that's awesome. I, I think you're right that not, not enough, certainly maintenance managers, know what the SMS is, know what the CVOR is, know how to read it and identify issues yep. uh, that can yep. be found there. Oh, so he's, and, 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 and why they don't collaborate, you know, the good companies, and I'll be honest with you, the good companies, they collaborate, you know, they meet regularly, they have a board meeting and the safety manager comes in, the general manager, the safety manager, the owner of the company, the maintenance manager, you know, all five of those guys and more are at that meeting and they're going, okay, what are we doing? How are we doing it? And uh, when I go to meet with them, they're all there at the meeting. Even if it's just a, hey, I'm stopping in for a midterm visit, see how life's going. They're all there because they all got questions. They all want to know, hey, we got ran into this situation or what have you heard about this in the industry? We heard this new rule coming out. What, when does that coming? Do you know any more? You know, I'm supposed to be a resource to them, but I can't be a resource if they're not going to be there to receive the information. Yeah. Yeah, there's so, so many of them just don't appreciate what the safety people from the insurance companies can bring. Um, yep. The expertise, I, and not to know the inner workings of any one company, but I'll share the numbers yep. with Old Republic, and I would think um, they're similar. Six years ago when I was there, I used to have 60 to 80 clients uh, that were actually mm -hmm. clients, and then I would probably see over, uh, along with them, all the different pre-quotes. So I'd see over 100 different trucking companies in a year. Well, yep. Yep. you see it a hundred different ways. Go ahead and mm -hmm. get some good ideas sometimes. Oh, God, yes. Very much so. Very much so. Well, because the, the, the concept is when we go in, we're not telling them what they have to do. I'm not there to run your company for you. But I'm trying to give you some information, some tidbits that I learned from this guy over here, which would be really good. Or I've seen this when I ran my own trucking company. Here's something that worked very well for me. But at the same time, 
if you take what I shared and you go, okay, I didn't follow it to the rule, but I went this direction and I went this far. and Wow, this has really turned out awesome. I'm going to go, that's great. Let me pat you on the back. And then while I'm at it, I'm going to take that information and share it with this guy over here because he could use that. That's awesome. And the real good guy is going to go, well, take one of my business cards. Give him my card. I'd be happy to show him what I did to make that work. You know, because there's no plagiarism in safety. And, and if guys can share it with one another, we can all be better for it. Well, that and let me just say something about being a safety consultant. I've taken 15 years of that e exposure and become a safety consultant. And John Farquhar, <laughs> how many years in safety? You, you said seven and seven. So you've got about 15 years as well in uh, well, sitting we, on we that. We won't talk about before that. <laughs> Well, I mean, I know you were a safety manager yeah. for a trucking company, but you know, like you've yep. got years of safety experience. I was in TNT safety yep. department before my 15 years with insurance, you know? So, yep. I mean, yep. I don't know how many years, 20, 23 years of safety stuff. Uh, you, mm -hmm. you're not as old as I am, even though you got a little more uh, gray. Um, <laughs> but, uh, it's thinning in spots. <laughs> uh, my, mine's thinned. <laughs> But, um, it makes it easier during this time to get a haircut, right? <laughs> oh, God. Um, anyways, so I would encourage the listeners and the viewers to take advantage of John's expertise if he does decide to hang a shingle out. And down yeah. below in the show notes will be John's contact info. So if you want to reach out to him, yeah. he's certainly to. Uh, available. But, uh, you know, John brings 20 some odd years. How many years of safety experience, John? I'm pushing uh, just over 30 now. Okay, so 30 years, he's got more safety experience than I got. Hold it. What are you doing on my show? Jeez. <laughs> I, I, I haven't figured out how to work the computer as good as you yet, so I'm not there. You keep going. <laughs> okay. So I'm happy to uh, uh, refer John because uh, I know he knows his stuff. John and I work together at different projects yep. and stuff. Um, so sure. great deal of respect for John Farquhar. Anyways, any Thank last you. words, John? Um, not that I can think of off the top of my head. We've talked about some great subjects and whatnot. Uh, I guess the biggest thing is hopefully your listeners uh, are listening, and, 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 and it's don't be afraid of the safety guy. Don't be afraid of your safety consultant. And keep in mind, you're paying them. So you want them to provide a service to you. So ask them, what can you do for me? How can you help me be better at what I'm doing? Um, safety consultants are going to do that. Safety managers, safety risk guys with insurance companies are there. I, I love it when a customer goes, this is what I'm struggling with. I really need to help, John. Can you give me a hand with this? Love to. Let me help you out. What can we do? Oh, God, this is, I got some stuff. We got some tools. Let's do this. Let's do that. You know, or you know what? I got one of my other customers who built a really cool um, solution for that. Let me get in touch with him and let's put you two together. And, uh, and it's phenomenal when you get that. And I feel good being able to help somebody to better manage it themselves. Yeah, it's, it's perfect that way. Anyways, John, mm -hmm. I want to thank you for being on the Dog On It Trucking Podcast. Thanks so much, buddy. No problem. Appreciate it. It was awesome. I hope you loved the show as much as I did. Please leave us a like, a thumbs up, a review, a comment, a rating, if it is in your heart. I thank you so much. And I do really appreciate your time. And join us again next week for another exciting interview.